Hello, are you filming? I am filming. Hello and welcome to the Wilkes Bear Art Crawl. I'm your host Chip. We're going to be exploring the wonderful art artistic uh, displays found around lovely Wilkes Bear. Uh, the uh, pieces of passion, artistic demonstration, social protest, um, <laughs> metallurgy. Um, yeah. Money laundering, technically. Uh, we're outside the courthouse now, and if you don't know, to get to the uh, where they take the prisoners before they, you know, dump them in the Susquehanna, uh, you have to walk this uh, tunnel. Now, if you follow me, it has a bunch of common imagery, like uh, Hebrew and countries that no longer exist. Uh, compassion for the people we're being thrown into the Susquehanna. Uh, be the change you wish to see in the world. What that means is uh, just slowly and contently walking into the ocean. <laughs> Love who you are. Love who you are. Not who you aren't. Lower your standards. <laughs> so, we have all of these here. These are actually like Native American, indigenous, African, Hispanic, Judeo, Muslim inspired Algonquin symbols and artistic pieces. If you ever go down to Mexico, you'll see at the side of the road, some guys selling like sugar skulls and shit. They're painted like this, you know, allegedly. I don't know, I've never left the state. I would never want to. Um, <laughs> tolerance, uh, you have to have a high amount of tolerance to kind of deal with the uh, omnichromatic vomit you're seeing in front of you. Uh, that's fun. Constant yeah. surveillance, that's good. Uh, not many people know this, um, but the peace symbol um, is actually the symbol for nuclear disarmament. You see, um, the line down the center represents a missile going up and the, the V is going up also. What's the opposite of up? Down. So it's going up and down, and that's what missiles do. And you don't want that. So that's why they put a big circle around it to draw attention to things you don't want. They would have put like an X through it, but that's already like trademarked by the no smoking and also the Ghostbusters. Uh, get rooted. Uh, Rooting in Australian slang means sex. So it's telling you to get, you know. Uh, so uh, here we have this thing. This is actually designed to get children um, crying and upset. <laughs> so when they see their father be, you know, taken down to the courthouse to be, you know, put in prison for most likely opioid, um, it just kind of lets them know that this is not a safe place for them. Here's a poem I'm not going to read. It's something about Mother Teresa. I don't know. Boo! Yeah. And now we're at the courthouse. Um, the courthouse, I guess, is art because it's engraved and shit. Uh, if you look over there, that's where the sewage is pumped into the Susquehanna. We're going to move along quickly because it smells like shit here. Yeah. We're trying to crawl over the yard. We're we're in the we're in the artistic trenches. The this is what I think of when I think of art. Yes. What well, actually when you think about it, art is intrinsically performative. I think there was something about like a children's museum where you call an actor or something. But the point is, uh, art without an observer is nothing. It's like. If a tree falls in the forest, does it make a sound? Yeah, but that doesn't mean anything unless anyone's around there to hear it, you know? Yeah. Alright, so we're gonna go up this stairway here. It's Sunday, so there's no police on it, which is good. Excellent. Because uh, police and art don't mix. There's 
plants here. That's kind of like God's art, kind of. Kind of. Over here is the real art. <laughs> okay. Alright, so here's our first look at the ark about here, right here. So over here. This is two anchors, right? And this is the bell from the USS Wilkes-Barre. Not many people know this, but this was actually in Normandy when we stormed on D-Day. And it went from 1934 to 1944, which is the year this is bell was made. This is actually commemorative. The original one sank um, by Northwest Africa after it was uh, erroneously, allegedly erroneously attacked by the Israel. But that's besides the point. Uh, everyone talks about the USS Liberty. No one talks about the USS uh, Wilkes Barre. Uh, over here, Damn shame. Over here, we have a deer. Uh, this is a memorial to everyone's truck who was totally fucking destroyed by uh, all the wolves being killed. So now there's too many fucking deer. Uh, sometimes if I'm driving, I'll just like roll down my window and shoot at them just to scare them away from the roads. Uh, but it doesn't change the fact that there's way too many of them and hunting them is illegal for most of the time. So there's that. Uh, this is for Korea, that doesn't matter. <laughs> Cringe. Yeah. Uh, life is a, that's whatever, it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, I think actually on the other side here, I think there's something mm. Oh yeah, here we are. No. So, uh, Ellen Webster Palmer, a friend of the working boy, uh, that means that she was a prostitute, you know, that's, it's, it's like an unspoken thing, but that's something you have to kind of accept when this, uh, kind of, uh, mining town we have here. Uh, the only professions that existed for most of the time was, uh, prostitute, uh, miner, and sheriff's deputy who shot the miners when they complained too much. Just as they should. So it was really just the miners and people who shot the miners from complaining. Uh, this is actually called brutalist architecture. You see the sharp angles and the pointiness of it all. It's very brutalistic and uh, violent. Uh, but that's the thing that you see as a broken sword, which is symbolic of not being violent. So what this is is what we call artistic nullification, right? What it means is that you shouldn't even look at it because it's not interesting. It cancels itself out. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Also, apparently it moves and you don't pay attention to it. That's, that's kind of uh, yeah. spooky. Um, there's more art down here. Down here in the Wilkes Bar. It's like woods. It's like a, it's right next to the thing. The highway right here is a fucking river. Right there. You got King's College. Not to be confused with Kong's College. That was a good one. <laughs> Maybe we'll see another squirrel. Uh, they just shot that one squirrel in New York. Did you hear that? No. Some guy had a, a pet squirrel that he rescued when it got killed. And uh, the state came and they shot it. They shot it in a raccoon. They like kicked out his fucking door. And then they killed it. And they said, oh, well, it bit me, which is like. Now, the police barged into a situation they weren't needed in. They showed up, 
and killed an innocent thing, and then their defense was that, oh, it was already sick, it already had rabies, and it attacked me. It's basically the George Floyd of squirrels, right? So, that's why I think we need to have some protests for that squirrel that died. Um, and I'm like a squirrel expert, kind of, so I think I know a thing or two about squirrels. You did make a squirrel video. I this was down by King. We should probably take a walk up there because it's less like noisy. Yeah, we should do that actually. <laughs> Whoa. That's some physicalness for you. Oh, yeah, we should take the stairs. Garbage and a blanket. Hey! Yeah. When you think about it, art is just garbage when you think about it. Yeah, this is a lot less noisy. Here we see lovely brown Susquehanna. Uh, there's garbage lines, sewage lines running through. Pump all the garbage right in there, keep it going downstream, you know. Now, one might say that the river's not fast enough to carry all of our waste down, which would cause the entire fucking city to smell. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> you get used to it after a while. Do you remember when we were in Philadelphia and we saw, like, the, the statues of, like, I think it was two, it looked like pepperonis that were just, like, floating? Oh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I'd be surprised if you did. I think about that every once in a while. Yeah. When I see stupid uh, art. Yeah. <laughs> I think going, going back to Philadelphia, or like New York, it would be pretty funny. You could probably do some stuff there. Alright, here we go. Here's a good piece of art here. The trash can? No. Yeah, the trash can. No, <laughs> that's the actual art. We're real art critics. We're doing a community service by informing all the dirty, uh, reprobate, unwashed masses about the art they're too dumb to appreciate. Yep. Imagine driving through Wilkesville constantly and never actually stopping and appreciating the art. Uh... <laughs> Only a total dumbass would do that. Yeah, I don't know who would uh, do that. <laughs> this is actually a Native American memorial. I don't know the name of the guy who did it because, well, frankly, they weren't allowed to have names at a certain point. But what this is here is it represents uh, two teardrops intertwined. Uh, the big one, the little one represents uh, Native American suffering, and the big one represents the enslaved African suffering. Because as we know, the Africans suffered so much more than the Native Americans. And the any kind of implication that uh, the Natives suffered maybe more or even equally is totally unacceptable. Unacceptable. It's unacceptable. Got unacceptable. So, I, th yeah. I thought the third time's the charm. I think you fucked it up the fourth time. Yeah. Uh, this here was put in, I want to say 2010, and then immediately it flooded, and they didn't put the thing up, so the entire area just flooded. This is where John Wick got excommunicadoed in John Wick 2. Uh, John Wick, the John Wick movies kind of fell off because like it stopped being about uh, like like a guy in the mafia and it became like some kind of like big thing about how oh it's this whole secret society thing that's lame I was crafty You see, a big part about the art crawl is the spontaneity. Is the spontaneity of your adventure. This is very um, spontaneous. And by that I mean I don't exactly know where the rest of the art is. <laughs> it's somewhere down here. I can feel it. You got that that tingle? Uh, it's not like a tingle. It's more like 
a sharp skin sensation in my eye. Like in the back of my eye. I really hope that <laughs> we're able to hear you say these words. Uh, hopefully. Uh, Actually, you could probably pause it for a bit because I think it's, it's a bit of a walk to get down there. This was actually on the art crawl, but it's a pretty. Uh, you want to back up a little bit? Sure. So, this actually wasn't on the art crawl, but I think it's an excellent inclu inclusion into our little uh, soiree here. Uh, see on those, uh, that sign there says going out of business. The two men uh, hanging on by a thread. That's symbolic of the collapse of the American economy and the uh, Persian rug business uh, that propped up Pennsylvania's economy for so long, right? Uh, also, there's a big uh, painting mural thing on that wall there. I don't know if you want to zoom in, but... That was a horrible idea. Full <laughs> painting of... Um, yeah. She looks kind of Mexican. <laughs> Of some Mexican chick. Alright. <laughs> the rest of it's down here. Alright. Is a statue of Christopher Columbus. Now, if you don't know who he is, he was the brave, brave Spanish man who discovered America and its virgin, untouched by mortal hands soil that was in no way occupied by anyone else. When, like, San so I actually have a funny story about this Columbus statue. Uh, just after the uh, Derek Chauvin incident, uh, a buddy of mine and I came down here, Stephen, the Russian from the Slavcast. You might remember him if you're into the deep lore of two random internet retards who can barely enunciate. Uh, we came down here for a, a Black Lives Matter protest just to kind of like feel out the vibes. And we came down here, and they had like thrown like a pan all over it, and they put like a plunger on his head, and that was weird or whatever. And we started talking to people, and you know, uh, the Russian kind of speaks well Russian a little bit. He at least he thinks he does. So he starts like talking Russian, and people are talking to him in Russian, which is really weird. Like, why, why, why do you know Russian? That's weird to know in Wilkesburg, Pennsylvania, this hick town of. 811 people and uh, we're talking to people like where they're from people from Philadelphia New York uh, Washington like you know they came from all over the like East Coast to like protest this specific statue in the middle of nowhere and uh, unrelated but there was also like a few pallets of bricks kind of like left around the city <laughs> Almost as if someone was like encouraging some rioting or whatever. I don't know anything about that. But what I did think was funny was that they covered him in like mustaches for whatever reason. And I said, well, why'd you do mustaches? That's right. And I was like, oh, well, because he's a pussy. Like, first of all, like having a beef with a guy who's been dead for like 600 years is stupid. The other thing is, uh, isn't that kind of like uh, misogynistic, you know? Hey, you know. Uh, maybe you're just not good enough feminist. You know, I'm a great feminist, you know. <laughs> when I don't... <laughs> yeah. You know, when a woman's talking, I don't even listen, because I know I'm not going to understand it. That is very <laughs> forward-thinking of you. Uh, all right. What we have here is a cube. Don't film it. Don't oh. film the cube. I'm going to have to blur uh, that. <laughs> yeah, blur it, blur it out. We'll blur it out All first. right, cube. Uh, I know there's art around here somewhere. I just don't know where it is. It's, it's looking bigger. Oh, here we are. Here art? We are. This is a, you see this, art? This is a great piece. Right? This I'm right a... here. Oh. <laughs> uh, just keep filming this white top. I'm just walk behind. Just keep filming as you walk around it. Okay. What we have here is, when you think about it, it's truly performance art. Uh, I don't know if you've been down here and like just hung around watching children. Um, uh. There's a lot of people who do that around here because it's looks better. Uh, kids love to climb all over this and that's actually intentional because you see the egg in the cage you want to zoom in on that the egg in the cage uh, that's symbolic of childhood and its fragility 
God, I love uh, this place. That horn is a symbolic of douchebaggery. But the egg represents the fragility of childhood. And the cage, the structure, is the only thing keeping it safe from falling on the ground and cracking. Much like the heads of the children who have climbed up this thing and fallen down. The cage also represents the jail bars that the sculptor is behind because he created this abomination which has killed at least two children. Two children are dead because of this. And that's what makes it really meaningful. Because art isn't real art unless the person who made it, or more importantly, the people who are involved around it, have suffered. Or Think they're of famous. all the greatest artists. Van Gogh. Uh, Van Morrison. Uh, Jim Morrison. I think that's all the artists. Yes, all of them have suffered. Uh, for some reason. Now... There's also, there's squirrel! Uh, here we are. There's some more art. Sorry. Here we go. See a squirrel get excited. Here we go. Now this is another, uh, this is another piece of art here. So, what we have here is, now, have you ever, all right, Christy, you went to public school, right? I, we, yes. <laughs> when the teachers were lecturing and droning on about inane bullshit, like ancient Egyptian mythology for some reason. You look around the classroom and you see like different flags and shit. One of the things you see is a early American revolutionary flag of a snake being cut into different pieces, right? And each piece represents a different colony of the 13 colonies. Or maybe 11, I don't know. And this, what it means, stop getting distracted by the squirrels. I'm talking important history stuff here. So <laughs> what that means is that a divided colonies Cannot stand. Pay attention to me. This is my thing. Not the there, there's no. Uh, but there's squirrels over there. <laughs> I'm doing a serious thing here. So it represents how America must remain united and not divided, or else it will fall to tyranny. This is what this snake represents: is a united America. How even though it's segmented, it's all heading into one one solid direction, one main direction, right into a trash can. <laughs> And that's what that symbolizes. Now, there's more art here. I know it. There might be one more piece of art. There's you got that sharp pain that, that yeah. tells you that there's more art nearby? Yeah, the one that makes you taste metal in my mouth. Yeah. It's that feeling you get when you try to remember someone who's dead, but you can't remember their voice. That, that was kind of... How many trees have a special secret? I don't know if it's one of them. We're going to find this and we're going to the lab. Uh, not this one. It's one of the main trees. Alright, we're good. Yeah. So, um... I was looking for a tree that had a little doorway in it. Uh, apparently they don't exist. Uh, I distinctly remember that there was like a little tree with a doorway in it. And you could sometimes open it, sometimes you couldn't. I'm not allowed to say what was in it. I had to have shown you, but you know what I mean, right? So the last piece of art we have here is this piece here. That you can't actually like understand. Now, Christian, I want you to get involved here. What do you... I think this represents. I have no idea. Just from the side. Do you have any guesses? It it looks like the Japanese structure, honestly, like the, the arches, but that's that's all I see from it. Alright, now this is gonna blow your mind. Alright, come over here. Come over here. Now, from this perspective, boom, it all makes sense. I I don't even think I have to explain what this represents, right? It just speaks for itself. It, it just like, the problem is like a lot of people, oh, I don't understand, it's just, it's just, it's just. no, because you're looking from the other side. From this side, it all clicks. 
Like you see, you just feel how it all just see how it like focuses your vision, right? It kind of like you, you you just get it. You know what I'm saying? Like I can't like enunciate it, but it makes sense now, right? Yeah, yeah, it does. Thanks for agreeing with me. It makes perfect sense. I, <laughs> honestly, it feels like one of those puzzle games. You have to look at the the thing from the right angle, and then exactly. it just clicks. Exactly. We're looking at it from the right angle, and it just clicks. Yeah, it, it, it clicks. It clicked for you as soon as I showed you from this angle. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. All right. So there's more art that way, I think. We're going to go check it out. Let's go. Hey, look, we got some art. Yeah, we got some art here. These are benches were put in in, I want to say, 2020 something. Uh, and, 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 trash cans. Uh, Oh, brother. Uh, they actually took down the George Floyd one to put up the Mr. Peanut one to commemorate when he fell off that cliff and died. Oh, yeah. But then he came back Tragic. like a baby for some reason. <laughs> Never the same. Actually, well, actually, they did suspend the baby peanut campaign because uh, Michael Jordan, was it? Who was the guy? Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant's helicopter crash was all over the news. Like, okay, we're going to suspend the Mr. Peanut campaign because... Like a real a real celebrity died in a fiery crash, so we're not gonna we're not gonna do Mr. Peanut Baby anymore. <laughs> um, yeah, Planters Peanuts was actually started around here. I think if you uh, looks like Twilight Town. Uh, well, not not this street, but the next street over, all the way down. Actually, we're, we're gonna we're, that's right over here. All right, yeah, let's... <laughs> we got to see all the art. Yeah. We're achievement hunting. Yeah. Actually, you know what? There is a thing... In fact, you probably saw some in the video, but those, like, blue and yellow markers, like historical markers, there's, like, 200 to 400 of them all over Pennsylvania. And one thing I wanted to do was to go on, like, a road trip, like, collect all of them. Like, take a picture of all of them. Yeah. I think that would actually be a cool, like, video idea. But it would, it would take a while because it's all over PA. There's like a list that has all of them located in the but... Um, yeah. Yeah. It would probably be like a little sport thing just to do. I think I'm pretty sure if you go all the way down this you can get to the uh, Planters Peanut uh, place. The Peanuts. So let's look this guy. Yeah. Uh, there's a Times Wiener. Times Wiener. Uh, Market Street Square. You know, that was at like... Le uh, slavery was never really legal in Pennsylvania, except for that spot right there. You could buy them and sell them there, but you couldn't actually take them off the property, so you had to like bring your work there for them to do. You would just see a bunch of people like lined up in circles like knitting stuff, brick, chipping coal. They had to bring it all the way over here. That's why it was like our mining town was so successful. Because we had like a 30 by 30 foot of slaves that did everything. Okay. Yeah, I think we can... Smell it. It smells like sewer. <laughs> that might just be the city. Oh, it's, it's like this. It's, it's all of it. <laughs> One day a great flood is going to come and wash away all the filth in the streets. The, um, yeah. I mean, it, 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 it does repeat, like, it happened in 2011. It's probably going to happen within the next, uh, three to six years. So, this is actually the car that, um, Lyndon B. Johnson drunk drove through 
Pennsylvania during his campaign for presidency. Not many people know that. He donated it back in like 1964, 65, just after Lincoln got blown away. Because, uh, you know, uh, Lyndon B. Johnson had to like continue the Vietnam War because uh, his wife owned like a controlling share of like helicopter manufacturing parts. So he made a lot of money with that. And then he stepped down because he couldn't like deal with the fact that uh, the feds were gonna be down his back because you know he killed JFK. But don't worry, because George Bush Jr. got, uh, George Bush Sr. got in control of the CIA and then presidency, which is basically why 9-11 happened. You know that Lyndon, Lyndon B. Johnson would have called people while taking a shit? And then, like, you could hear him shitting in, like, presidential recordings because he would just call people and then complain to them while shitting, just, like, assert domin dominance. Dom dominance. Uh, he would assert Domino's Pizza, which is why he had such a... <laughs> <laughs> um, Alright, here we go. We're just going to come up this hill here. we got to go to good work with Yeah, yeah. So, I can smell the art. Right here. So, this watch, as you tell, originally it worked, right? Like it, it was broken, but it still moved. And symbolically, that represented no matter how bad things can be, no matter how shitty you think your life is. No matter how terrible the economy is, no matter how hopeless and destitute everyone becomes, you may see like life is hopeless and then everything's falling apart. You have no control, you have no money, you don't talk to people anymore, you're isolated, you're alone, everyone kind of hates you, the city smells like shit and feces all the fucking time. There's crazy people all around, there's homeless people just showing up walking through your city streets they're freezing they're gonna die in the winter and you're gonna have to come through in the spring and see them rotting once they thaw nobody cares everything's falling apart none of that matters because as long as that clock is still ticking you have hope <laughs> as long as that clock is still spinning as long as the gears are still turning you will have hope that things are gonna get better and that is art we walked all the way down here just for that. I hope you're happy. Let's go back. All right, right people, right people, right people. What we have here is a statue of the frontiersman, uh, Isaiah Wilkes, a revolutionary hero, a general amazing guy. Uh, very, very important to helping Pennsylvania get its independence very very important to uh pennsylvania's dedication to avoid don't film the plaque don't film the plaque just, fil just don't film the plaque as information just film the actual <laughs> picture like keep ranting uh a, re a real revolutionary mind uh a gentleman and a scholar gr great personal friends with um uh <laughs> pen what's the guy admit found pennsylvania Quaker guy? Uh, I don't know. Quaker something. William Penn. Yeah, he was a good, a great, great personal friend of William Penn. Had a bunch of land. Would, like, freely give land to, like, enslaved people who escaped the slavery to go, like, work it. Just a general, a generally uh, swell individual. Which is why he was named, was one half of wilkes -Barre, you know, because he was a very influential local figure. Now, if we go down here, right... This guy is Mr. Spontaneous. Here, here we have this is Francis Bear, uh, the namesake of uh, Bear, the Bear part of Wilkes Bear, famed libertine. Uh, 
horrible person all right and for his crimes against God and mankind he was imprisoned in this stone statue um, I don't know if you knew this but he was the first person in the continental United States to be convicted of rape didn't know that you didn't know that no nope. I, I didn't know this guy uh, existed before now he didn't um, let's see here like uh, just like the amount of sins he's committed is just too long to list I think for the most part it's one of those things where it's like, being, like you could you feel that right I it yeah it feels like you shouldn't be here and this I, is not a safe place to be I feel those negative waves yeah uh, he didn't he to his credit he didn't own slaves he just would like see them being taken to market and would just shoot them as he drove by or rode by just before cars were invented. Um, he didn't have horses for very long because, you know, the sodomization just kind of like blew him out. Uh, and yeah, for his uh, sins and transgressions, he was imprisoned in the stone, uh, kept on display. Uh, he's reaching up towards God for mercy, but God is not interested in that right now. So he imprisoned him in the stone. It makes you think, doesn't it? Bear. Mm -hmm. Good old... Did I say his name was Francis Bear? Good old <laughs> Francis Bear. Old guy, uh, yeah. yeah, good old Francis Bear. Shame what he did to those kids. Mm. Alright, well... Uh, Thank you for coming to the Wilkes Bear Art Crawl. I've been your host, Chip. Uh, hopefully, I could think of some other place that has enough public art that I could do this again. Uh, I thought it was an absolute joy to walk around a city that smells like shit half the time and rant like a lunatic in front of strangers. Um, I think that we've learned a very important lesson about art, what art is, what art means to us as a species, why art is invalid as a medium, and why artists should all be killed. All right, see you guys next time. <laughs>